let's continue our exploration of estimating areas under the curves using calculus. We're going to start this video with an example. We're going to estimate the area of the region bounded by f of x equals 1 plus x squared, the x-axis, the lines x equals negative 1 to x equals 2. And we're going to use three rectangles, and the height of our rectangle is going to be determined by the right endpoint. All right. As before, we should sketch the region that's being described. So it's our parabola. The, our parabola f of x equals x squared shifted up by 1, and it's bounded from negative 1 to 2. Okay, and I want the area of this region right in here. All right, if I break this up into three intervals of equal length, let's see what that would actually mean. So we'll put 0 there, negative 1, 1, and 2, right? If I break from this, this whole interval into three pieces, one, two, three. Notice that the length of each, in this case, is one. All right? Well, the way I could actually solve that if I change that to a different number of um, rectangles is I would first take the length of that rectangle, which is two minus a minus one, and I would divide it by the number of rectangles I wanted. So in this case, three. That's just 3 over 3, which is 1, which we already knew. Okay, so if I look at these rectangles, so this is the base of 1, this is going to be the base of the next one, and then that's the base of the third one. All right, now the height of the rectangle is going to be determined by the right endpoint. Now before I do that, I'm going to label these points something. Also, I'm going to, since I'm going from negative 1 to 2, it's my interval is from negative 1 to 2. Now, at the same time, I'm going to write this kind of in a generic form. So assuming that my uh, interval of this region goes from A to B. Okay? Perfect. Okay, so the X sub 0, or X naught, is always equal to my A. Okay? Then the next X value would be X sub 1 and the next x value would be x sub 2, and the next x value would be x sub 3. Okay, in this case, there would only be 3. And what should happen is the right endpoint should be x sub n. In other words, the x value associated with the number of rectangles we're using. So, the, so it should be 3, since we're using 3 in a, uh, rectangles. Okay, good. So the height of this first rectangle it's going to be determined by the right end point of the rectangle, so x sub 1. So I'm going to go all the way up to the height of x sub 1, and I'm going to draw that rectangle. <laughs> I'm going to shade it in. All right, my next rectangle, so going from x1 to x2, and I'm going to determine the height of it by its right end point. So I go as high as x sub 2 allows me, and I shade that region. And the last one, I my last rectangle goes from x2 to x3, and the height of the rectangle is determined by f of x3, or the value of the function at 3. Okay, and so I'm going to find the area of each of these. We'll call the area of each region r1, r2, and r3. And I'm going to say that my area is about the sum of those areas. All right, well, the area of this one is this distance right here, which we know to be 1, times the height. Well, remember, I'm using the right endpoint, so it's the value of the function at x sub 1. So f of x1 plus, now what about my rectangle 2? Well, it's the base is the same distance here, which was over here, which was 1, times the height of this rectangle, which is determined by x sub 2. It is going to be the function evaluated at x sub 2. And then r sub 3 is going to be 1 times the height of this rectangle, which is f of x sub 3. Okay, well now I can easily find these values by plugging them in to my original function. So what was x sub 1? So if negative 1 was x 0, 0 was x sub 1, 1 was x sub 2, and 2 is x sub 3. So this is really 1 times f of... 0 plus 1 times f of 1 plus 1 times f of 2. 
Now f of 0 is 1 plus 0 squared plus 1 plus 1 squared plus 1 plus 2 squared. So that's really 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4 plus 4, which is 8. So this area under this curve is about 8, but not exactly 8. Now what would have happened if I had chosen the left endpoints? Well, let's look. We're going to look at that same question, but this time we're going to use left endpoints. So again, let me do a quick sketch of the graph. Negative 1 to 2. Okay, um, this is negative 1. I'm still doing three rectangles, so if I look at this, negative 1 is my x sub 0. Then comes 0, which is my x sub 1. Then comes 1, which is my x sub 2, and I, I should only have 3, right? And that should correspond to my right endpoint, and it does. Okay? And the distance between each is still 1, because that's the length of my interval divided into three different rectangles. Okay. So if I sketch the bases of each of those rectangles, the height this time is going to be determined by the left endpoint. So I'm going to sketch this rectangle, and then I'm going to sketch this one, and then I'm going to sketch that one. Okay? So this area right here is different than the one that I just did with the right endpoints, but we're going to use it still to approximate this area under the curve. So this area is about equal to well, I know the bases of all my rectangles are 1, so 1 times, but this time instead of x, f of x1, we're going to choose f of x0, plus, now this rectangle is going to be the base, 1 times its height by its left endpoint, which is f of x1, plus this last one, 1 times f of x2. And we never use x sub 3 when we're using the less, or we never use x sub n when we're using the left endpoints, just like we didn't use x sub 0 when we were, used, we're looking at the right endpoints. Okay, so this is equal to 1 times f of negative 1 plus 1 times f of 0 plus 1 times f of 1. And we already know that this is 1 plus 1 squared plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 squared. So this time our answer is 5. So in the first case we had 8, and in this case we have 5. And those are very, very different. So it seems to me that we would like to develop a process that made the approximation <coughs> better.